So as um, mentioned, I've done a couple of things, mainly around computer input. And uh, that's the on-screen keyboard that's in Windows. That came from our company. Uh, we make a head tracking device for people with disabilities. People like Christopher Reeve used it. Uh, you move your head, it moves the cursor, replaces the mouse. And swipe, um, I noticed Jody using it this morning on the back, and uh, that was pretty cool. It's on millions of devices now. It's the text input on smartphones where you slide your finger to, to connect it. And that came out of our company as well. We spun it out into its own company that's now down in Seattle. So that's kind of where I come from. And that kind of all led to uh, today's topic, which is clean keys. <coughs> I'm going to need my drink of water, my throat. <coughs> so we've made the world's easiest keyboard to clean. This was, problem was brought to us by dentists who had to wipe down their keyboard between every patient. They had digital x-rays that were coming into the operatory, which put a computer there. And the regulation is anything in a two meter radius around the patient's head has to be sterilized between every patient. And that suddenly put a computer in that area. And you know, think about it, how do you clean a computer keyboard you know, every 15 minutes? It's, it's a tough problem. And so we designed Clean Keys, which is a, a wipeable keyboard. The, the big problem that we're addressing um, beyond dental now is something called ho hospital acquired infection. And to give you a scale of the problem, in, in North America and Europe, there's about 150,000 deaths a year from hospital-acquired infection or healthcare-acquired infections. You go to the hospital with a broken leg, you catch um, an infection, and one out of 17 people that do uh, die from it. The superbugs that are in hospitals are hard to kill, and it's a huge problem. You know, we just had the World Cup in the summertime to give you an idea of the scope of the problem. They, they had about 50,000 people a game at the World Cup. So this stadium, ch chock full of people, 50,000 people. About every four months, all those people are, it's like you blew up a stadium. And, and we do that, you know, three times a year, right? Now, if we had terrorists blowing up soccer stadiums, we would hear about it, right? But we don't really hear about hospital-acquired infections because you hear about uh, causes of death being pneumonia or sepsis or something else. It, it's not a category that, that has been tracked as you know, caused by hospital-acquired infection. But this isn't um, a, a secret to hospitals. They know this is a problem. They don't like... Uh, having infections spread around. So there's been several studies done to find out what causes the spread of infection. And uh, this was reported in the Amer American Journal of Infection Control. You can see keyboards were by far the most contaminated surface in, in uh, infection sensitive areas in the hospital. Water faucet handles were the next largest. And you know, it kind of makes sense. You can wipe down water faucet handles. Lots of Lots of uh, studies, you know, the famous one in the UK showed that uh, your average office keyboard is 40 times more contaminated than your toilet seat, you know, and everybody's grossed out. But I hope it is because, you know, you usually have the toilet cleaned regularly, you know, so it's really not a surprise. It should be pretty clean. But the, the keyboard just doesn't get cleaned that often because it's hard. Uh, this is keyboards from an actual hospital in the States. The keyboard on the left is a system that actually gets wheeled into the OR. And this has a rubber cover over the keys that, that was actually glued, glued down. And you can see there's, there's caked on dirt on, on those keys. So in an environment where they are absolutely paranoid about sanit sanitation and, and sterility, um, the keys have caked on dirt. The one on the right is at a nurse's station. If you can see the little orange flecks there, they're potato chip crumbs. <laughs> I, I saw the nurse eating the potato chips when I went through and took a picture of this. So this also has a rubber cover. It's, it, it's removable, so you can go and wash it and clean it. But you can see how often that's being done. It, it, it isn't, and in fact, it makes the problem worse because rubber's porous, it's holding the dirt. It's keeping all that contamination at the surface instead of letting it fall down through. 
So now you're typing on potato chip crumbs. And of course, it's not the potato chip crumbs that are harmful. It's the things that are loving it that there's potato chip crumbs there and that are eating it and um, thriving. You know, um, why are hospitals such a problem? You, you hear about the disinfectant that's used killing 99.9% .9 of the bugs, and you figure that's great. The problem is the 0.1% that it, it doesn't, didn't kill are the Arnold Schwarzenegger of bugs, and you just wiped out all their competition. So they have free reign to just flourish in, in that setting, and it becomes really hard to kill them. So you have to be very diligent about hand washing and, and uh, keyboard cleaning. So that's what Clean Keys is all about. It's just simply easy to clean. It's not the only cleanable keyboard in the world, but you can clean it in place. It's touch sensitive, uses touch capacitance, you know, just like your iPhone. The problem with something that's touch sensitive is when you rest your fingers on it, something happens. It, it does something. And we knew on a keyboard you had to be able to rest your fingers. So the challenge we gave our engineers is, okay, let's make a touch sensitive keyboard that lets you rest your fingers without doing anything. And they said, okay, let me get this straight. You want it to be touch sensitive and not do anything when you touch it. <laughs> right. So we actually overcame the problem with tap sensors, with vibration sensors. So there's little accelerometers in clean keys and touch sensors. And when you tap, you know, you make that thumping noise. It detects that thumping noise as a vibration, locates it, looks at the transition on the, the touch sensors, correlates the two, and then outputs a key. So this way we've made the world's first touch sensitive surface that will let you rest your fingers. That makes it usable as a keyboard. So it's that combination of those two things. It's got some pretty cool applications. You know, they brought my iPad along. This is just a little mock-up, but this is clean keys. Clean keys can actually be that thin. So you think about laptops. They've had this form factor for 20 years. Tablets are coming on the scene. Uh, part of the problem is you still have to be able to type. Swipe is great if you're less than 40 words a minute typer. If you're greater than 40 words a minute typer, you're still going to want to use a keyboard. And with clean keys, you know, it can be literally that thin and this can become my laptop. So it's got some really cool mainstream applications that now that we've solved this, you know, the old fashioned way of using mechanical keys that got invented in 1857 with the first typewriter has pretty much stayed the paradigm until now. So we're really changing that with clean keys. So today's topic about healthcare. Um, we, we aren't really using nanotechnology in clean keys right now, but I have a wish list of stuff that we need to be able to do in the keyboard that I think nanotechnology could solve. So I'm going to put out some problems and maybe some of you can go, hey, we, we, can, we can do that. So the first is um, pathogen detection. Basically, wouldn't it be great if our keyboard could put a little alarm and say, uh, I'm dirty or I have bugs on me, bacteria detected, you know, that would be the ideal without having to swab and culture and grow it for a couple of days. And three days later, you found out there was MRSA on that keyboard. And that's why everybody's getting sick in the ward. You know, be great. I, I've, I've heard lots of uh, ideas here on how to detect things using nanotechnology. I'd love a sensor that did that, that I could stick in my keyboard and automatically tell. Um, we also would like to be able to tell when we've been cleaned. So part of that pathogen detection might be able to tell when there's an absence of, of, of contamination. We, we can use touch, sen touch sensors right now. We can tell when someone's wiped it. We can tell when uh, it's been a liquid because it evaporates and the touch sensors can kind of sense that. So we're, we're doing some cleaning detection right now. But this is a really critical thing in hospitals. The infection control officers want to monitor the compliance of cleaning. And so if they can have the, the keyboard automatically report back to them when it's been cleaned, they'll be able to see certain uh, wards where it's not being done and they can go and correct that. 